All right, uh, so let's uh, make a little video uh, for all the beginner Python programmers uh, who want to get uh, strong at the Python and coding. Uh, so uh, using my Python problems uh, for my course uh, CCPS 109 Computer Science 1 uh, for uh, formerly Ryerson University, uh, Toronto Metropolitan University, uh, Chang School of uh, Continuing Education. Uh, so uh, my Python problems uh, and uh, the automated tester that uh, you'll soon see in action, so they are all available here in this uh, GitHub repository, uh, Python problems, and uh, I'll show you how to uh, do these uh, problems uh, in the Replit environment, and after that uh, we look at uh, how to uh, do them in uh, PyCharm also. Uh, so the files in here that uh, when you download uh, these files, so uh, the problems themselves, uh, they are in two PDF files, uh, uh, 109 Python problems for CCPS 109. So exactly as it says, so, so there is 109 problems in there that I've uh, created uh, over the years and uh, uh, in this original document. Uh, so uh, when uh, uh, I had the 109, so I kept the magic number. So whenever I thought up a better problem, so then I removed uh, some of the weaker and uh, less interesting problems. Uh, so hopefully all these uh, problems are gonna be good and interesting. And uh, then uh, if you don't uh, care for some problem, it uh, doesn't spark joy in you. So then just uh, skip it, uh, do find a problem that you like to do and, uh, and uh, do those. Uh, so uh, these problems, uh, they're intended uh, to be used uh, after you've uh, done like a four or five weeks of uh, intro to the language, you've been solving like a coding but exercises or similar. This uh, startup uh, pretty straightforward as you see and uh, they arranged them uh, in order of uh, difficulty approximately. Uh, so uh, the first uh, 50 or so, so uh, would be decent uh, for a university level uh, intro course. Uh, and then uh, they get a bit uh, harder. And then here in the end, uh, we have problems uh, that uh, would be good for like a second or third year students, or uh, if, you, like this, if you're like a first year student, but they're looking for a challenge, uh, uh, so these are some of these used like a discrete math and depth algorithmic ideas, but uh, I am explaining them as they are needed uh, here. But uh, so starting with these intro problems, uh, uh, so uh, there should be uh, the first uh, 10 or 20 like uh, for, uh, for people who are learning Python the first time. And then uh, in addition, uh, so uh, I started the... Uh, a year ago, I uh, had to get my fix again, so uh, I, I had already finalized uh, the content of the Hanona. So, so then I started uh, creating new problems. Uh, these uh, usually are a bit, bit harder, but like the first 10 or so should be pretty straightforward. Uh, there's a problem uh, here, uh, the 52 now, so following the same format. Uh, both uh, these collections, uh, they use the same automated tester, so you can uh, pick and choose uh, problems uh, as you like. So uh, let's see how uh, you can start uh, doing this problem. So let's uh, start uh, that uh, you are operating on Replit, uh, as many programming students uh, these days are, of course, so good. Uh, so how do, we, uh, how do we do that? So you create the repo, and uh, when you're creating, so notice uh, there is an import uh, from GitHub here. Uh, so uh, you just uh, copy paste uh, the GitHub uh, URL to my Python problems. And uh, so I uh, will import from GitHub. So uh, uh, where do we, uh, from URL. So just give the URL in here and uh, delete uh, to import uh, from GitHub. Uh, so now we get uh, a repo. The repo is uh, booting here. So uh, the, then uh, the repo is going uh, to download the, all the necessary files uh, for you. Uh, it takes a, takes a moment uh, to load in here. So importing all the files. So I'll explain uh, what all these uh, uh, files are. Uh, so uh, uh, the file uh, labs uh, 109 that uh, contains uh, the first uh, model solution just uh, so that you can verify that the automated tester is uh, working correctly. And uh, this is the only file that uh, you're going to be modifying. 
So if at any point uh, you feel the desire or urge uh, to modify any one of these other files in here, so fight that urge, that urge is bad and wrong. So, so you shouldn't uh, be doing that. Uh, so uh, all the solutions uh, you can be writing in this uh, same uh, labs109.py file, because this is the file where my automated tester uh, that's going to be testing your solutions for correctness is going to be looking for uh, the solutions. Uh, so my automated tester, so we can take a look at it here. So uh, it's a whole bunch of uh, Python functions that I wrote there. Uh, so you don't need to and shouldn't be modifying this in any way. But uh, so when you press uh, this uh, run button in here in the replit, uh, so what this has, this has been configured uh, to run the automated tester. And uh, so running it, so you can see the results um, here in the here in the right window. Uh, so uh, we uh, we get the output there. Uh, so this is the version latest version December 11, and uh, the link uh, to the repository where I keep it. And uh, then, uh, so what my automated tester does is that uh, it's gonna be testing uh, all the functions uh, that you write in here feeding them hundreds, uh, even thousands of uh, randomly generated test cases and uh, verifying that your function uh, returns the correct answer to the test cases. So there is a big uh, file expected answers. That's a compressive file, don't bother opening, uh, that uh, contains the expected answers to all these uh, uh, test cases. And uh, then so uh, uh, my tester, so uh, it uh, reads uh, through this uh, lab 109 by file, uh, finds out uh, what the uh, functions uh, you have defined in here. So uh, the student file contains one recognized uh, function to test. So it uh, runs the test cases. So for the function Ryerson letter grade, so function that is given uh, the integer value of your raw marks, and then it returns the Ryerson letter scale. Uh, your your letter grade. So uh, with this uh, got the success in uh, pretty fast. So of course there's about like a hundred test cases. So it, it should be should be solving like that. So uh, the one out of uh, one functions uh, then are uh, are correctly working. So then when we're gonna be writing some more solutions in here. So let's uh, take a look at the look at the labs here. So let's look at the second one. So ascending list. So uh, the function signature always uh, given here, so you can copy paste. Uh, so the signature is going to be exactly that. Otherwise, my automated tester is uh, not going to be finding it. So let's uh, uh, let's uh, so write this function. So given the, uh, so Replit AI is uh, nicely giving us uh, giving us uh, the auto complete. Uh, we just give us a closing. Uh, so the documentation, so <laughs> already giving the, uh, so uh, the one solution that uh, is it true that the uh, items I uh, less than uh, items I plus one for I in, in the range. And so if you're like a fan, fan of these uh, solutions where we're looping to the range uh, or the both possible positions, so of course uh, this can be written as a, as a one liner. So now see what happens uh, when I run, run the tester again. So uh, okay, so already I got the, the wrong answer. So so now the AI, so uh, we got to be careful here. So, so notice what happens if uh, the uh, code uh, doesn't pass the test. Uh, so then my test is going to be printing out the, that if this uh, function so was given the arguments, uh, so the list uh, one, two, two. So then uh, the correct answer was supposed to be false, but uh, the function returned true. So that automated test stops at the first discrepancy, the first uh, test case where your function returns the correct uh, wrong answer. Uh, so what was the expected uh, correct answer? So then, then that's also wrong. So we have a one out of two function. So now the, the, we look at this uh, is ascending. Uh, that uh, we say that uh, each element can uh, be strictly larger, so this asking strictly ascending. So I, I guess uh, we should have uh, named the function is strictly ascending. Sorry about that, but uh, we just fix this that uh, each element is uh, strictly less than the previous item. So we fix the bug and uh, let's run the test again. So now you notice that uh, uh, we got uh, the solution. Uh, so this should typically take like a, about a second. 
so uh, it depends, of course, on, on the speed of the replit. So I'm using a free account there. So of course, we're not going to be getting like, like a too much uh, processing power here. So if you use the paid replit account, you get like an eighth course or uh, four, so you get like a half a core here. Uh, so uh, that's the one solution. But uh, so, of course, uh, we could also try writing the solution like in a more like uh, old timey fashion that the, the previous element. Uh, so let's say that it is like the first element uh, le less one. And then for each uh, item in the items, we don't even, and uh, if item is, uh, let's say that if it is greater or equal than the previous. So we, once you find the first counter example, so we can say, no, we don't even need to look at the rest. And uh, the same as say usual. So, that uh, then we make the previous. So when we're looping uh, through the items, so then uh, when the calculation depends on the item and the previous item, so what, we in is, so what is the previous item when we're at the first item and then there is no previous item. So often we make the previous item to be none, but uh, so sometimes we can tactically initialize uh, the prev to some more convenient value that we don't need to handle the first uh, uh, element as a special case that we don't have a, like a loop, loop and a half situation. So loop and a half is always like a bit in, in elegant that it's always nicer if the for loop through the items and so processes each item, the first one, the middle one, the last one, uh, exactly the same way. So as soon as we find the element uh, that is uh, uh, also, it can be uh, so less than equal to the prev. Can be careful here. So, so then uh, the counter example that's also wrote, and otherwise, uh, so we can always uh, run the automated tester. And uh, okay, we see that uh, it got the correct solution. So, this just uh, the speed of the underlying preplit servers. So, how busy the servers are. We run this, let's run a couple of the, now. Now, this I got the uh, success in one second now. So it somehow magically got like it twice as fast and uh, it keeps, keep, keeps getting faster. I don't know if there's some kind of just-in-time compilation going on or, or something like that. But so, so this idea that uh, you're going to be writing your solutions into this lab, Labs 109 uh, file. And uh, then, uh, so uh, notice uh, my automated tester also uh, so uh, runs the tests for your function in the in the order that you list them here. So if you always uh, put the newest function on top that you're writing, so then uh, you cannot get the get the the, the test uh, for that the, the run in the beginning. Of course, so you can also have uh, like a two separate projects, like a one as a temporary workspace, and then the other one where you where you collect your solutions. And it's a good idea, of course, to make backup of your work. And so uh, we know that uh, these tests, so anybody can. Uh, without no fault of their own, you enter some uh, Kafka's technological nightmare uh, that uh, you lose all your work and and and, and your life. Work. So they always uh, back up uh, all your important files in two separate file systems that are under two separate credentials, like just as a life advice uh, in general. Okay, so that's how you can be using this. Uh, this uh, credit lab. So let's take a look at, uh, suppose you were going to work locally on your computer on uh, PyCharm. So, so what do you do now? So uh, uh, what you can do, okay, well, so, so, so uh, now uh, in GitHub, so I uh, noticed that there is this green code button. So I uh, click on that and then there is a download zip in here. So now uh, you could uh, download, so you get the zip file containing all these files and then you'll unzip that uh, this entire folder where you like uh, whatever place on your computer you normally unzip uh, the, the things uh, that you download no, don't keep them into download folders they're just uh, polluting everything and uh, then so if you look at uh, the PyCharm uh, so uh, so if I look at them so here is uh, my labs 109 uh, so uh, so here uh, is, is all these uh, files uh, with a couple of extra files uh, that I didn't put on the GitHub. Uh, so I'm not going to show my Labs 109 model solution that contains them all, but like, uh, so here, so to run the tester, so uh, you just uh, right click and uh, then run that uh, particular file. But why are you being like that? So uh, what, what, what we would be seeing so uh, this would be now running the test cases for us. So I have 175 problems there on the file that I built up uh, 
over the years. So it's going to be running the test cases for all the functions uh, that you write. So, so you can operate either on Replit or uh, on Python, or uh, if you use a spider or like a whichever the Python language is, is the same everywhere. So use your favorite favorite IDE and uh, so, so this is how you will be uh, solving these labs.